want to thank you guys for tuning in and watching. Hey, my name is Marcus. I'm uh, excited to be speaking to you, excited to be preaching the word of God to you, whether you're in your, your house, if you're in a, a Bible study, if you're in a small group, if you're in your living room. Man, I just want to encourage you real quick and let you know that, man, God is good. God is still on the throne. I know we're kind of going through a lot right now. I know COVID-19 has got us kind of quarantined, but can I tell you, if I'm going to be quarantined, I want to be quarantined with the Holy Spirit. Come on. I want to be quarantined in the presence of God. I don't know where you are or what you're going through or what you're doing, but I know this is that wherever you are, Jesus can be there with you. Wherever you are, you can have the presence of the Holy Spirit. Wherever you are, you can have the anointing of God. Wherever you are, the oil from heaven can flow down from your head to your feet and cover your children. Come on, and cover your brothers and sisters and cover your family and cover your room, cover your electronics, anything that you're saying or doing, God can cover and be with you. Psalm 27 says this, David looked and he said, I'm going through a lot right now, Lord. But if there's one thing I could ever have, if there's one thing that I could desire, it would be to dwell in the house of the Lord. It would be to dwell into the tabernacle of God. It would be to inquire of your temple. David was saying this is that I'm going through a lot right now. There's a lot of craziness in my world. I've got people coming after me. I've got diseases all over the place. But can I tell you, David, in the midst of everything he was going through, David said, the one thing I want is to be in the house of the Lord. And if I can just get into the tabernacle, the word says that you will cover me with your pavilion and you will cover me in the secret place of your tabernacle. David was saying this, the old school testament uh, um, a temple was, a, was a, a foreshadowing of the Holy Spirit being in us. And he was saying, if I can just get into the presence of God, I know that there is going to be a sweeping anointing that will cover me and protect me and to shelter me. And I want to thank God that wherever you are, the same Holy Spirit that I feel in this room, come on, is the same spirit that will speak to you where you are in this moment. And I want to tell you that God has been speaking to me in this season. I've been excited. Listen, I know we're not in church right now. I know we can't be together like we'd all like to be. But man, I feel like I have a word for you today because I've been in prayer and I've been seeking after the Lord. And can I tell you, I've been praying the last few months and God's been speaking the same thing over and over and over. And he's been saying, son, there's going to be a cleansing in the body of Christ. There's going to be a cleansing amongst my young people. There's going to be a cleansing over the mature adults. There's going to be a cleansing in every age group because we've got to get back to our first love. We've got to get back to true worship and repentance. We've got to get back to not giving lame offerings. In the book of Malachi, they were the, the priests were shout out by the prophet and he said, you are giving halfway offerings. You are giving spotted and blemishing offerings. You've gotten lazy in your worship. And God is telling us today, some of us have been going to the same youth group every day, every day, every week for the last five years. Some of us have been in the same young adult group for the last ten, five years, whatever, how long, however long the time is. And some of us has gotten lazy in our worship because we've been too busy worshiping something else. And the Lord is saying, you've got to stop being lazy with your worship. You've got to stop playing church. You've got to stop living one way on a Sunday. Come on, somebody and live like the devil the rest of the week. But it's time to give a true offering. It's time to give a true sacrifice because the Lord is holy and he only accepts a worthy sacrifice. Can I tell you, the Lord is bringing a fire to the body of Christ. The Lord is bringing a fire to his young people. But you've got to understand that fire only falls on a worthy sacrifice. Or a fire will only fall on a worthy sacrifice that comes from man and goes up to heaven. God is looking for a worthy sacrifice. And he's saying, are you going to worship me in half-hearted ways? Or are you going to give me true devotion? Are you going to give me true honor? Are you going to give me true worship and praise and adoration because I am seated on the throne I am high and lifted up and I can accept nothing less than everything that you have because there is a true and proper worship that is coming back to the body of Christ God is saying there's going to be a cleansing young people Come on, there's going to be a cleansing that comes into your house, into your life, into your home. And the Lord told me this. He gave me a vision. I want you to know God still speaks. He still does give visions. Come on. And the Lord gave me a vision one day. And in this vision, I saw a neighborhood. It had beautiful houses in it, white picket fence, nice, for, you know, the beautiful windows. You name it, it had it. The golden Labrador, all that stuff. It was a beautiful house, beautiful houses in a beautiful neighborhood. And as I was looking at the neighborhood, suddenly all 
all the doors in the neighborhood of the houses burst open and there was a mighty rushing wind that would go into the houses and as the wind was going through the houses come on somebody it would blow through different rooms in the house and it would begin to shake things and it would begin to reveal things and I saw the wind go through the living room and it would shake TVs and it would shake Xboxes it would shake Playstations and Nintendo Switches and I would go it would go into the kitchen and it would start to shake the refrigerator it would start to shake the oven it would start to shake the snacks and then I saw it go into a room I saw it go into a bedroom and the wind blew over the wind uh, the, the um the bed sheets and it, it, it revealed a Playboy magazine and then I, it blew open the bathroom door and I saw a couple arguing and then it blew open the upper room and I saw a student a young person playing video games and then I heard the Lord saying son I'm going to blow my wind on my people in this time when they feel like nobody can see it when they feel like nobody notices when they feel like nobody can tell what's going on I'm going to blow a wind that is going to reveal the idols that are in their homes God is blowing a wind. He is blowing his Holy Spirit wind through our homes and through the places we think are in secret. And God is going to blow his wind to reveal the idols and the issues that we have in our homes and in our lives. And we've got to get right with God. I came to admonish somebody. What that means is to warn. And I came to bring a holy warning that the Lord is saying it is time to remove and reveal our idols and our issues that we have that we think nobody else notices. But in all actuality, the Lord sees the very things that we idolize. The Lord sees the people we glorify that aren't him. And God is saying, I am going to bring a cleaning of the idols out of the homes of my people. Young people, we have got to t remove the idols out of our lives because we've been trying to hide them for too long. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 19, there is a woman named Michael. Michael is the wife of David. We all know who David is. Come on. He beat Goliath. He ripped the bears and the lions apart. And he has a wife named uh, Michael. And Michael was the daughter of a king. Michael was the daughter of King Saul. And she was a woman that knew the things of God. She was a woman that dwelt in Jerusalem. She was a woman that understood the things of the Holy Spirit. She understood the things of God. But it says this, that because King Saul was chasing after David that David got pushed out of the back door see Michael and David were at home and Saul came to his home and he went out the back door and in a time of trouble when Michael could have stood up for her husband when Michael could have stood up for righteousness when Michael could have stood up for unity and holiness in her home she pushed David out the back window can I tell you David is a foreshadow of Jesus Christ how many of us when things get rough and tough when our grades aren't the way we want them to look when when our job isn't paying the bills we wanted to pay, when our friends aren't thinking we're as cool as we try to be, how many of us push Jesus, come on, out the back window instead of standing with Jesus in times of crisis, in times of, of tribulation, in times of, of great travailing, and understanding that there that everything isn't the way I want it to be, everything isn't the way I, I, if I think it should be, but can I tell you, I'm not going to push Jesus out the back window. Young people, God is saying that in your times of crisis, in your times of isolation, in your times of, uh, 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 of anger and of your lust and of depression, of feelings of suicide, when you are in the middle of it, when you are in the thick of it, when it really gets real, it's not time to push Jesus out the back window. It's time to bring Jesus to the forefront. And I want you to understand, people, that Jesus wants to be in the forefront of your lives, but we can't allow our fear to let us push him out the back window. And not only did she push him out the back window, but when the king came in, he he began sweeping her house. When the king came in, he began sweeping and looking throughout the house. He was looking for something. And what Michael did, instead of standing up for righteousness, instead of standing up in power, she backed away in fear. And what she did was she put, her, she put, she put something in her bed to make it look like it was uh, David, but it really wasn't. And what actually the Bible says in the 1 Samuel 19, she put an idol in her bed. She put an image in her bed. That word in the original language is teraphim. It was literally a figure that was supposed to represent God and what we have done if we are not careful many of us can look into our lives we can look into our rooms we can look on our phone come on we can look in the incognito history even though you can't really see that we can look through all the things we've been doing and saying and we can realize that if we're not careful a lot of us have been stuffing Jesus out the back window and putting something in our bedroom putting something in the hidden place that nobody else can see thinking that we still represent Jesus thinking that he's still approving of our 
our worship and our praise, but in all actuality, we have stepped into a place where we are idolizing things more than we idolize God. Come on, what are the idols that are in our bed? The Bible says that she covered the idol in her bed. I want to ask somebody in this, uh, through this uh, virtual thing today, what is in your bed? Come on, what's the thing that you've been idolizing more than Jesus? What's the thing that you've been glorifying more than Jesus? What's the thing that you've been prioritizing more than Jesus? Come on, young people, listen, I'm, all, I'm a fun guy. I like to hang out and play games and do all that stuff. But can I tell you, if I can spend more time every day playing a game than I can praying and worshiping and getting into the word and hearing the voice of Jesus, then I've got an idol in my life that I need to address. Come on, if you can spend all night texting and chatting on that guy or that girl on on your phone until four o'clock and five o'clock in the morning but the moment that it's time to pray you get tired or the moment it's time to get into the word you get bored there must be an idol in your life and can I tell you that any good thing that you put over God becomes a bad thing any good thing that becomes over the things of God becomes an evil thing and it becomes an idolatry thing and we have got to look at the idols in our life because can I let you know that when we open the door to idols we open the door to the enemy many of us are worshiping God and we were doing the church thing but now that nobody can see what we're actually doing we have stepped into a world where we are living in sin because we don't think other people notice can I tell you the things that you are watching the things that you are listening to because you think nobody notices you're supposed to be making a secret place for God the Bible says that we that he dwells in the secret place and that we should be, build a secret place for God but instead of building a secret place for God we've been lifting up so many idols in our homes come on because we don't think our friends notice we don't think our parents notice we don't think our pastor notices. So we build these secret things and we don't realize that instead of building a secret place for God, we have allowed the enemy to build a secret place for himself in our houses. Come on, we've allowed the enemy to build a secret place for his dwelling and for, the enemy and for demons and demonic forces and principalities to begin to take over our home. Young people, you wonder why you're depressed. It's not because it's just some sort of physical issue, even though those things do happen in the mind. Maybe it's because you've been watching so many horrific things and sinful things that there are demonic forces that are starting to attack your soul because you have allowed them legal access to live in your houses, to live in your rooms. We've got to look at the things that we are taking a part of and listening to and watching. Can I tell you, when we lift an idol above Jesus, we are giving place to the enemy to destroy our lives. And the very things we use for comfort, come on, the enemy wants to use to kill, steal, and destroy from us. I heard a story about a woman one day who had a pet snake. Who wants to have a pet snake? I don't know. I got a pet Labradoodle, and he's cool. But listen, I'm not doing snakes. I'm not doing lizards. I'm not doing reptiles. And this woman had a pet snake, and she loved her snake so much, and she wanted to be comforted because she was going through a lot, and she had a lot of issues in her life that instead of leaving a snake in the, in the, uh, in the, in the whatever those things are called that, that you put snakes in, aquariums or whatever, uh, instead of putting the snake where it's supposed to lay, she let the snake sleep in her bed with her she let this snake sleep in her bed and every night the snake would get closer and closer to her and at first it used to be kind of up in a little ball and a little coil but after a while she realized that the snake would start to stretch itself out the entire length of her and then she realized her snake wasn't eating and she said I'm worried about my pet snake he brings me a lot of comfort and I want him to be healthy I want him to be okay so I'm going to take him to the veterinarian she took her pet snake to the veterinarian and the veterinarian and said, has he been eating? She's looking and said, no, he hasn't been eating. Has he been moving around a lot? And when you put him in the little glass thing, no, he hasn't been moving around a lot. He's just been kind of sitting there. Does he seem more alive when he's with you? Yeah, yeah, he does. Where does the snake sleep? Come on, the veterinarian looked and she said, where does your snake sleep? And the woman said, well, he, he sleeps with me. He sleeps in my bed. And the, and, and the veterinarian looked and she said, you've been allowing a snake to sleep in your bed. Snakes don't belong in beds. They belong in crates and they belong locked up because they are dangerous. But you've gotten so comfortable, you were looking for a comfort source that you allowed a snake to lay with you. She asked, Look, let me ask you this about your pet snake. Does it stretch itself out to sleep with you or does it wrap itself up in a coil 
The woman looked and she said, well, uh, he used to wrap in a coil. Now he's stretching himself out. I thought he just wanted to be comfortable. The veterinarian looked at the woman and said, your snake isn't trying to comfort you. Your snake is preparing to eat you. Your snake is preparing to devour you. Your snake is preparing to destroy you. He's not eating because he wants to eat you. He's laying with you because he wants to eat you. Can I tell many of us in here that a lot of us have gone to other things of comfort in the time that we should be leaning on Jesus. And instead of leaning Leaning on Jesus, we've pushed him out the back window and we're allowing other things to get into the bed with us. Come on, there are some things that you need to get out of your bedroom that don't even belong in your house. There's some things that are in your browsing history that you shouldn't have even typed in the first place. There's some things, there's some conversations you've been having because you didn't think anybody noticed that the, th that the throne room of heaven took note of and you've got to realize that there's a God that sees all, hears all, and knows all. And there's also an enemy that is seeking after your soul. Soul. And when we allow different things from the world to become an idol, the enemy will use it literally to devise a scheme to destroy us. You got to listen, you got to expose your enemies. You got to expose your sin. You've got to expose your idol before your idol exposes you. You've got to deliver yourself from that spirit before that spirit delivers you into the captives of hell. We have got to get right with God and say, Lord, I have been placing you on the lowest pedestal I could find. And I've been placing the things of the world on the highest pedestal I could find. And God is saying, now is the time to clean the house, to clean your room, to clean the phone. Listen, that you've been, you've been annoyed by your parents that say clean up your room your whole life. But what happens when you become an adult? You realize that you do need to keep your room clean. And God is calling us into a place of maturity where we don't always need a pastor to say, you need to do this, you need to say this, you need to pray this, and you need to read this. But if we're stepping into a place where it's time to grow up, come on somebody, so that we can go out. And the Lord is saying, in this time, I'm causing a cleansing to come into your life, and it is time to reveal and remove the idols that you have. It's time to reveal and remove the idols that are in your life. Can I share one more story with you? In the book of Genesis, in the book of Genesis, there's a woman named Rachel. She's married to the man Jacob. And it says this, that as they were traveling, that the king came and he was looking for his idols. There was an idol that they had stolen. And Jacob said, we don't have your stuff, but his wife was hiding the idol. And when the king came in looking for it, instead of saying, here it is, she hid it. Can I tell you, when King Saul came in, Michael hid the idol. When the king came in, uh, Rachel hid the idol. We are hiding idols from God, not realizing that he can already see it. And God is not coming for us to find it. He's coming to reveal it because he's already seen it before he walked in the door. Can I tell you, the, the thing you think you're hiding the best, God has already revealed in the courtrooms of heaven. And can I tell you, there is a judgment coming to the house of God. And that is a thing to be encouraged about. Can I tell you what the word judgment means? In 1 Peter chapter 4, the Bible says that judgment begins in the house of God. And the word judgment, at the root of the word, it means to cut away or to separate. Listen, we've, we need to be encouraged that God will come and cut away the idols in our life. He will come and separate us from the idols in our life so that we can walk in holiness. We can walk in righteousness. Young people, I believe there's a great move of God that is coming to our nation, that's coming to the state of Colorado. Before I moved to Colorado, listen, I'm not from Colorado. I'm from Florida. Before I moved out here, I read three different books. And three different books said there's a great revival will come into America and one of the places it will start is Denver, Colorado. God has got a mighty move that's coming starting with young people. Young people, you ought to be encouraged that God says in this time, I don't want to just use the older generation. I don't want to just use the pastors that have been doing it for 20 years. I want to use you. Young people, we got to clean it up because God wants to use you. Young people, we got to get right with God because God wants to use you and he is raising up young people. Jeremiah said, how can I preach for I am only a a youth. God called Jeremiah when he was young. David was anointed with oil before he was even an adult. Can I tell you young people, God is calling us to a greater realm of glory and a greater realm of understanding and revelation. And it starts now by revealing and releasing our idols from us. The last thing the Lord showed me in that vision I shared with you earlier about the neighborhood. After the wind came through and began to shake things, I watched an entire neighborhood full of families. I saw older people. I saw children. 
I saw teenagers and young adults, and they were all walking out of the room. They were all walking out of their rooms and walking to the, to, to the trash cans, and they began to throw things away. But the amazing thing about when they threw the things away was that they were throwing it away, but they had smiles on their faces. They were full of joy. The whole neighborhood began to laugh and shout for joy. Why? Because they were throwing away the idols in their life. And God is not telling you to throw away your Xbox. Maybe he is. That's between you two. God's not saying throw away your TV. Maybe he is. That's between you two. He's not saying dump that guy or girl. Maybe he is. That's between you two. But listen, what he is saying is it's time to bring the idols down. Come on, it's time to bring the idols down. It's time to remove the idols. It's time to say, I want to get right with God, so I'm going to leave the other things behind. And I believe that there's a generation of young people that are ready to stop playing church, that are ready to stop playing around, that are ready to stop acting one way on Sunday and acting another way uh, another way every other day of the week. Listen, I'm, there's a generation rising up that's going to throw away the mass of all the different personalities they have. The personality they have at church, the personality they have with their friends, the personality they have with their family and then the personality when they are finally alone. Listen, some of you are dealing with depression and suicidal thoughts and I want to pray for you because I believe this. Many times it stems from not knowing who we are and we've got to know who we are and we are children, sons and daughters of the most high Jesus. You are born into righteousness when you give your life to Jesus. You are, been, you are listen, you are, your name is written in the Lamb's book of life when you give your life to Jesus. Your name is written in a place that cannot be erase as long as you follow the Lord when you give your life to him and God says I need to be the one and only God the one and only God in your life. And when you do that, when you remove the idols, when you remove the issues you're dealing with and say, Lord, here it is. Help me get through this. Lord, here it is. I repent. Lord, would you just clear my mind? Would you clear my room? Show me anything I need to get rid of. Show me the people I need to stop hanging out with. Show me the music I need to stop listening to. Show me whatever I need to see. When we do that, the Lord ushers in a new joy and a new peace and a new calmness and a new serenity that we could ever imagine before. Young people, I am excited because God has something special in store for you. And I want to pray for you that in this time, you will allow the Lord to clean your house. The Bible says this, that we are the temple of God. We are the house of God. If you are a young person and you have given your life to the Lord, this building that I'm sitting in, this isn't the church. We are the church. We are the temple of God. And I want to pray for you that in this time that God will help deliver you, set you free, and give you new life and set you on a firm foundation. I want to remind you of Psalm 27 that I started reading before that said, I want to dwell in the house of the Lord. It says this, that when I do, you will cover me in the secret place and set me on a high rock and set me on a solid foundation. The Lord wants to set us on a solid foundation today. Young people, I am excited. And I want you to understand because I declare and decree by the spirit of the Lord that there's an amazing third great awakening coming to this nation, to our young people, to our churches. And it's going to start where we turn away from the things we've been idolizing. Come on and turn back to Jesus. Let me just pray for you for a second. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I thank you for every person that's going to watch this video. Lord, I thank you for the young person, the old person, everywhere in between, Father, that you want to speak to, God. And Lord, I ask that the spirit of judgment and burning, as Isaiah 4 says, will sweep through your house. Because your word says when you do that, that the cloud of God will overshadow us, God. Would you bring our, your presence back? Would you bring your glory back? Will we see it in a way we've never seen before. Lord, I thank you for every revival that you've done in history. I thank you for every awakening you've done in history. I thank you for every soul you saved in history. But Father, I'm standing right here praying for everybody watching this video, and I want to say we are tired of hearing about the old things. We're tired of hearing about how you used to do it, God. And we're saying, Lord, would you do what your word says and bring a new thing? Isaiah 43 said, I begin to do a new thing. Do you not yet perceive it? Lord, I believe that in this time. You're going to bring rivers out of the deserts, God. You're going to establish our feet, and we're going to go from glory to glory as we cleanse ourselves and as you remove the things from our life. In Jesus' name, Lord, be encouraged, guys, that there's going to be a great uncovering, a great uncovering, but God is doing it, that we can go to a new level in Christ Jesus. Listen, God bless you. We'll see you guys later.